Here with Michael Chandler. Uh, Michael, how has training gone? Training has gone good. I mean, this is the best shape I have ever been outside of a training camp. I have, uh, I have ramped my training up. I've, I've knew, you know, I, I defended the belt in November. Uh, I took about a month off to let myself heal and and get some rehab and, and take some time off. And then from from December till today, I've, I've been training so hard um, in San Diego and kind of doing a little bit of traveling. This is the best shape I've ever been in. Um, focused on my nutrition, my supplementation, making sure I'm I'm where I need to be. This is the leanest I've ever been. So um, I got 13 weeks to get ready for this title fight, and I am so ahead of schedule. Uh, it's unbelievable. So I'm excited about it. What's it like to fight in Madison Square Garden? It's uh, I don't know what it's like yet. You know, you, but you but got it's the butterflies. But yeah, I mean, you know, I went to the Knicks game last night. Uh, Nicole Platt. Uh, and Spike TV hooked me up with literally cage or not cage side floor <laughs> seats there cage side seats you know, floor seats to the to the Knicks last night literally my feet were on the hardwood you know so so to be sitting there and then look up and you see you see that Madison Square Garden look everybody has seen it before with the big jumbotron and the, the lights and it, it's got this iconic feel to it and literally walking walking backstage and walking through the halls the same halls where where Tyson and Holyfield and and, and Ali and Frazier where those guys warmed up in the back, where those guys walked the hallway to walk out to walk out to that ring in the middle of Madison Square Garden. It's nothing short of amazing. It's nothing short of, of a, a phenomenal opportunity. And it's almost surreal to, to know that the legends of the combat sports have sweated and bled right here in this arena. And I get to go out June 24th and to be put on a platform to do something great and hopefully people get pumped up and inspired about, about what I've been able to accomplish. And, and Bellator has done some amazing things since their inception in 2008. I've been with the company since 2010 fighting on in little Indian reservation casinos in front of you know 17 people wow, and then, yes. and now here we are Madison Square Garden so it it's cool to have been one of the guys one of the homegrown guys who has grown with Bellator as Bellator grew um, and the relationship with Spike TV Viacom Kevin K John Slusser it's it's just uh, it's an amazing symbiotic win-win situation and uh, June 24th Madison Square Garden I can't wait to throw down what are your predictions for the fight predictions for the fight man he's he's a tough tough guy he's he always comes in shape he can he can win on the ground he can win on the feet uh, he always shows up um, great cardio and he hits really hard you know and he's young and he's hungry he's where I was five years ago when I snuck in and and, sh and shocked the MMA world and, and took the belt from Eddie Alvarez so you uh, you have to leave no stone unturned you have to dot your eyes and, and uh, cross your T's and, and you have to you have to make sure you have to embrace the uncertainty that's going to happen inside the cage because he can beat me just as easy as anybody else can in the entire world. Um, it doesn't matter if you're better on paper. It doesn't matter if you're supposed to be the guy. It's mixed martial arts and you have to embrace the uncertainty that's going to happen. So, you know, I, I look forward to facing him. I look forward to testing myself against him. I look forward to fighting a, a young, hung, hungry buck like himself. Man, he's he's young and he's hungry. He's, uh, you know, he seems like a really good dude. He seems like a, a passionate guy about the sport. He seems like a guy who is... Uh, who's excited about this opportunity. So those are the guys you gotta be worried about. He's got nothing to lose and, and everything to gain. And June 24th, I plan on going out there and defending the belt. What do you make of Mayweather versus McGregor? Do you think uh, that's gonna be competitive? How do you see that? Um, I I know a lot of people don't think the fight's gonna happen. I do think Mayweather versus McGregor is gonna happen. I think there's just too much money on the line yeah, for absolutely. it not to happen eventually. I, I don't think, you know, I think Mayweather's gonna make the lion's share of the money and then uh, Connor's not going to make as much money as he wants to or should, but because he's going to have to do a co promotion with the UFC. But it's, I think the fight's going to happen. I just don't see how Connor could even come close to beating Floyd. Floyd. Floyd is as close to unbeatable as you possibly can be in the sport of boxing. I mean, I thought Canelo was going to be able to put hands on him. You know, I thought. Um, I thought numerous guys that he fought were going to be able to put hands on him, and, and his defense and his um, his speed and his counters are just they're on a whole different level. And I'm sure Conor would never admit this, but boxing speed is a lot different than MMA speed. If, if you and I are mixed martial artists, even if you have fast hands for a mixed martial artist, they're slow compared to boxing. Your reaction time is slow compared to a boxer's. Your distance and your, and your, your uh, negotiation of, of the speed and the distance is so much different uh, if you're a boxer. So I don't think it's going to be that competitive. I think Mayweather runs away with a decision. What were your thoughts on the Conor uh, Eddie fight? You know, I honestly thought Eddie was going to be able to weather the early storm and, and kind of wear him down, kind of like Diaz did the first rep, the first fight time they fought. Um, but like Eddie, Eddie was mad at himself. You know, he went out there and tried to strike with one of the best strikers in the world, a guy who has power. Um, 
you know, so I, I felt for Eddie that night. Um, but once again, man, you, you can't hate talent. You can't hate on talent and, and, uh, and greatness. Connor has continued to show time and time again, even, even in his loss, he accepted the defeat and he came back and uh, I got nothing against the guy. You know, I don't think he's as good as he says he is or he thinks he is, um, but he's definitely better than most of us thought he was. You know, a lot of us didn't give him credit for a long time and I think he's, I think he's that good. Are you hoping that there is more co-promotion in the future? Oh, I would love that. Yeah, man. I mean, I think, I think the way that the sport is moving, man, I mean, how, how do you not? I mean, yeah, exactly. you have two very, two large organizations in, in the sport now and the UFC is, you know, the UFC has, the UFC paved the way, man. You know, I, I'd be crazy. If, I, all of us, and even Bellas or even Scott and even these guys would be crazy if they said they, they hated the UFC because the UFC, and they don't, the UFC paved the way for, for this sport since 1993 or whatever it was. And then Scott came in and Strike Force and, and now Bellator. It's been, it's been an awesome progression of the sport. So I think when you got these big promotions and you have guys, you have guys in, in, in this organization right now who are ranked in the top 10 in the world. So why shouldn't you see them fight the other guys in the top 10, even if they're in other organizations? So we'll see. I think it's wishful thinking. I don't think it's going to happen. But would I like to see it happen? Absolutely. Well, as a fan and as a, a media person, I hope you can make those fights. Thank you. Yeah. I wish you the best. Thank you. I get a ton. Of, yeah, I get a ton of people all the time. Hey, you need to go to the UFC and shut McGregor's <laughs> mouth, you know? And then there's just and then 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 for every person who says you need to shut McGregor up, there's about five other like European slash Irish fans <laughs> who, if you say one thing about him, you have 85 mentions. People right. just, you know, what I mean, but that's. That's what sports are all about. Yeah. Becoming something that people want to follow and defend. You know? Do I like McGregor's fans? No, absolutely not. They're noxious. Would be careful. You know this is right <laughs> I know. But most of them, most of them are absolutely um, obnoxious because they, they come at you with, with, with uncentered, uncensored, unfiltered stuff. And you're just like, wow. But that's what you have to relish in and love about this sport, that, that people get behind people and people believe in people and people are loyal to people. So it's cool. And I hope that I can continue to build my fan base like that. Right on. Michael Chandler, thank you. Appreciate it. We'll see you soon. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good luck, bud. Thank you.